Hello and welcome to the Street Preachers class. <clears throat> Once again, Westminster Larger Catechism class that is, and um, we're speaking about the rule of God's rule of obedience. That is the moral law that God has given, has revealed for our instruction uh, to educate us uh, as to what kind of uh, sinners it is that we are. And of course to turn us then to Jesus Christ in order to find salvation. So if anybody has any doubt as to um, the manner of sinner that they are, uh, the debt uh, that they are mounting up uh, towards God, well then the place to go is to these commandments that we're looking at now. That's the reason, that's the purpose for which they are given, to be a schoolmaster, instruct and to educate us as to what sin is. Transgression of the law, that is. This law, the law of God. Those Ten Commandments, if you want to check them out, uh, you'll find them um, in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and you'll find them also in the book of Exodus at chapter 20. We come now today to the third commandment and we're looking, uh, if you like, at the um, negative side of the commandments as we go through them, each one of them, that which is forbidden by the commandment, each commandment. Maybe perhaps the time permits, we'll double down and go back through them again and deal with positive, that is, what God requires in them. But for the meantime, the forbidden is what we're dealing with. In order to highlight, bring to an understanding, maybe for you, I don't know, maybe for the first time in your life, your existence, um, bring to you um, a knowledge, an understanding of your sin. It's by the law is the knowledge of sin, the apostle tells us. Without the law, then there is no knowledge of sin. So the commandment today, the third commandment, what are the sins forbidden in the third commandment is the catechism's uh, question. And uh, in Exodus chapter 20, uh, that commandment uh, uh, reads in this way. Uh, Exodus 20 verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And then the answer that the catechism, the catechist gives to his question, what are the sins forbidden in this commandment? He answers in this way. The sins forbidden in the third commandment are the not using of God's name as is required and the abuse of it in an ignorant, vain, irreverent, profane, superstitious or wicked mentioning or otherwise using his titles, attributes, ordinances or works by blasphemy, perjury, all sinful cursings, oaths, vows and lots, violating of our oaths and vows, if lawful and fulfilling them, if uh, of things unlawful, murmuring and quarrelling at, curious prying into and misapplying of God's decrees and providences, misinterpreting, misapplying or in any way perverting the word or any part of it to profane jests, curious or unprofitable questions, vain janglings or the ma maintaining of false doctrines, abusing it the creatures or anything contained under the name of God, to charms or sinful lusts and practices, at the maligning, scorning, reviling, or any wise opposing of God's truth, grace, and ways, making profession of religion in hypocrisy or for sinister ends, being ashamed of it or ashamed to it by unconformable unwise, unfruitful and offensive walking or backsliding from it. 
thus the answer to the catechist's question what are the sins forbidden in the third commandment thou shalt not take the name of the lord thy god in vain and then malachi chapter 2 and verse 2 verse that we would apply to this subject today uh, reads thus if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name saith the lord of hosts i will even send a curse upon you and i will curse your blessings yea i have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart god's name of course is um well any means by which god would reveal himself his name is the revelation of god in exodus he says to moses who asks him that very question what is his name he says i am a uh, name of course title if you like that um, is used by the lord jesus christ as well signifying of course his deity i am i am the light of the world i am the way the truth and the life he is the i am he is god almighty el shaddai he has many names and he has many titles and they are of course very precious to god anything of course that is or any title or name that is a revelation of god himself is a revelation of his being his character his holiness his righteousness and so is very very precious to him he's jealous very jealous of his name not jealous in the way that you are you and i might be sinfully god is holy altogether holy his jealousy is a holy jealousy and he's very jealous of his name and as malachi tells us here in chapter 2 and verse 2 uh, speaking to his own people who are misusing not revering god's name that he will send a curse upon them and he will even curse their blessings because of it so to take the name of god in vain and when i use the name god please do understand will you i'm talking about the god of the bible i'm talking about the triune god the god who has revealed himself and this is part of his careful what you say this is part of the revelation of his name that he is the triune god that he exists in three persons so you be a muslim you be a subscriber to the watchtower society you be careful what you say about this so you may not understand it who does completely utterly it's how god has chosen to reveal himself in his holy word in holy scripture and it pertains to you and i it whatever we don't understand to put our hands on our mouths and just be quiet and receive accept what god says by faith yeah so the sins uh, the meaning of the word vain thou shalt not take the name of the lord thy god in vain this pr primarily means to take god's name in vain means to um use his name falsely falsely yeah anything in any way that's false or wrong using god's name for the wrong reason for the wrong motive lightly trivially uh, in jest you know or um, um subscribing to something that well you know to be false is false and um joining god's name to it false or wrong is to take the name of god in vain and of course arriving from uh, arising from ignorance of god's self-revelation um well this of course is 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 no excuse ignorance is not an excuse um you know it's, it's our duty to know to seek after god even if you do not know him today it's your duty a moral obligation because you know that god is so you have a moral obligation to seek after god and to find him and to come to a knowledge of him 
a knowledge that is of his name, who he is, because his name reveals to us who and what God is. It's his self-revelation, of which, of course, many people are ignorant, lie in ignorance and darkness of today. And then, of course, well, here's another way by which people might be surprised, you know, at this, but um, some Christians, that is, you know, to, that going about and telling people that God is is love, you know, and nothing but, and nothing but. We have a church here in the Western, the Western Hemisphere, at least anyway, that's drunk with this, you know, that what is God? God is love, and that's that's all that they have to say. They go about telling everybody and anybody uh, that God is love, as though that was the sum of the matter, you know, that was the sum of God's attributes. Well, you see, that's false, that's wrong. Yes, God is love, undoubtedly so, immensely, immensely so. His, his love is immense, it is vast, it is astonishing, wonderful. But that's not all that there is to God. That's to give a, that's, to, that, that's false, you see, that's to give a false impression of God's being and character. What kind of love does God love with? A holy love. It's not the love of Hollywood. It's not the love of your soap operas. It's not the, the love of your mainstream media today. It's not the, the gushy emotional feelings of men and women. It's not that. It's a holy love. It's a love that it's a love that loves righteousness, but he also hates wickedness. And those who do wickedness. So, you see, there are many ways in which we can give false, impres false impressions about God. Yes, God is love, and God is forgiving, he's gracious, merciful, he's pitiful, he's kind, he's all that, but he's also a hater of sin and iniquity. And all the nations, as I said yesterday, all the nations that forget God, the wicked shall be cast into hell. So there is hatred with God, you see. There's much talk today is they're not going about about, about hate crime. They're, they're inventing stuff just about every day, you know, with regards to what, what constitutes a hate crime. Well, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to inform them, but, uh, well, no, I'm not sorry, but uh, you perhaps understand what I mean, that, 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 that God hates, you know. And, well, you know, that, that's not palatable. People don't like that. They like to think of God as being uh, very loving. And he's like the, the white bearded old gentleman sitting on the edge of a cloud, just waiting to ooze out forgiveness and love and attention to everybody and anyone uh, at any time that they, they care to, you know, even think about him. So, you see, we have to... God's name is his self-revelation. So we have to speak of God the way that he has revealed himself, not falsely. So when I'm talking to people or people are asking me about God, what God is like. I mean, if you're a Christian today and somebody asks you the question, what is God like? What would your answer be? Just to say simply love, partially true, but not the whole truth. You have to give a balance. You have to give a true, a biblical, a biblical impression as God himself has revealed himself to be. So you see, this would be, this would be abuse and also using God's name in trivial matters, you know. And people, I don't know if it's ignorance, I don't know if it's because they don't read their Bibles or because, uh, because they're poorly, they're badly taught. But I see it in social media every day. You know, people, uh, you know, uh, jokes, you know, and, and uh, funny things, you know, that they, they deem to be uh, humorous, you know, and they attach God's name, the, the Lord's name to it. It's blasphemy. It's, it's forbidden in this, the third commandment. It's against the, 
the rule of obedience that God has given to us. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. They do it with the other commandment, the one I spoke about yesterday, about images, idolatry. I see pictures all the time, you know, of, 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 of supposed pictures of, of Jesus Christ. It's again the second commandment. And to take all your trivial, your humorous matters, you know, and to make jokes, you know, and to bring God's name into it, you are not just demeaning God's name, but you're, well, you're committing blasphemy. His name is holy. And his name is to be revered. His name is to be feared. So using his name in trivial matters, irreverence, using his name in, in an irreverent manner, a profanity that's even worse, to use God's name to curse somebody, to swear at somebody, uh, or an oath, you know, taking an oath, say, you know, maybe in the magistrate's court, you know, to take hold of a Bible and, and people are doing it day after day, well in this country at least anyway. They're asked if they want to swear on the Bible or some other religious book, maybe the Quran. And and the, the attendant comes with the Bible and they put their hands on the Bible and they swear that they're going to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They brought God's name into it. And they're going to get into the dock or the witness stand and they know they're going to tell lies. Or they end up telling lies. Yeah. Or making an oath in God's name. Maybe religious. I, I, I recall um, hearing of a man who uh, he happened to be a Presbyterian minister and he was, uh, he was being... Uh, question with regards to his faith, uh, with regards to entrance into this uh, denomination. And he was asked if he uh, subscribed to the articles of faith belonging to that church, uh, which he affirmed. But then later on, of course, it's discovered that he does not believe uh, subscribed to their articles of faith at all. And when questioned about it, um, he um, his, his answer was, he said, but he said, I had my fingers crossed. <laughs> I, I know I fell, when I read that, I know I fell out my chair. Yeah. Maybe you don't, maybe you're not surprised, I don't know, like, yeah. But I was absolutely astonished at that. He thought that excused him. He was taking an oath into a Christian church denomination and he was doing it in God's name, an oath. Then of course, you know, with regards to that, you know, in, in the religious uh, sphere of things, like, you know, um, uh, there are men who enter into churches, take membership in churches. Yeah, Baptist and Presbyterian, it doesn't matter the, the label you care to use. Yeah. They, um, they, they take oaths, you know, concerning certain matters pertaining to that particular church. And then they go living, preaching or practicing in, in contradiction to, to that church's articles of faith. And then, of course, as the catechist tells us, you know, making a false profession of faith for whatever reason, <laughs> maybe even for gain. Yeah, you know, I don't know what it would profit somebody. I, I, you know, I, I can't think what it would profit somebody to make a false profession of faith, but it happens all the time in many churches. To falsely profess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is to take his name in vain. You've, uh, you've not escaped from sin. You just added to your sin in doing so. Uh, using God's name in connection with anything that is unlawful, that is criminal. 
you're bringing the curse the curse of God upon yourself the curse of God is already upon the human race don't you know mankind the entirety of mankind every man woman and child child born into this world is under the curse the divine curse because of Adam's sin because of man's sin and the only one who can relieve you of that curse is the Lord Jesus Christ, the only mediator. Appointed and anointed of God and sent into the world to die on a cross to take that curse upon himself. To relieve those who truly and actively believe in him from the curse of God. Only Christ himself can lift that curse from off you. But to swear in his name, take an oath in his name that is unlawful, that is criminal, that is false, that is wrong. Or to profess faith in his name falsely, knowing that you don't believe. You just had added, you just added curse to curse. Superstitious practices, the catechist tells us superstition of course which is um well you know i mean that's endless isn't that bottomless superstitions of men you know and especially pertaining to religion you know rubbing crosses and stuff like that like you know that they hang around their necks i don't know why anybody would want to hang an instrument of torture and death around their neck i mean would you go about would you go about with a, an electric chair or a gallows hanging from your neck? But people do. And there's some people, they think it's a good luck charm, you know? They think, oh, just got to touch it. They're in trouble, touch it. And it's just utter superstition. And it's taking God's name in vain. Fortune telling, magic practices, you know, incantations, um, bringing God's name into it. It's blasphemy. Using God's name with a, for a wrong motive, with a wrong attitude towards God. What should your attitude towards God be? Well, that of love, that of um, reverence. God is to be feared. I am holy and he requires you to be holy, he says. Yeah. And that includes, that includes revering his holy name, holding his name. And his name is anything by which he makes himself known. Not just the name itself, God, El Shaddai, El Elohim, Jehovah, the faithful covenant Lord, uh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, uh, your attitude should be one of love, of, of reverence to those names, the titles that God gives us of himself. But anything pertaining to God, his word, the Bible, the Bible, to trash the Bible. Yeah, now you may not understand it. You may not be a Christian, but don't think... Don't make things, don't make matters worse for yourself. In ignorance, if you don't know that, then just be quiet. If you don't understand, just be quiet. Study the matter, look into it, read it. Seek the Lord whilst he may be found. But to trash his word because you don't understand it, because you don't get it. You're just making things worse for yourself. You're just adding sin to sin. So don't do that. You're taking God's name in vain. His word is holy. That's why we call it the Holy Bible, because it comes from a holy God. It's his word. It's his breathed out word that he loves himself and requires you and I to love and revere. So any wrong motive, attitude toward God, and cursing another human being in God's name? I ask you. But people are doing it all the time. 
I mean, which, is, which one of the commandments do you think is the most broken, the most trashed? I don't know. In this country of mine, you know, here in the United Kingdom of Great Britain, or not quite so great now, but it used to be a criminal offence in this country. Blasphemy, take God's name in vain. You could end up in court, you could end up in prison for taking God's name in vain. But now, now, those in authority are probably the worst. Let me give you, a, I saw an example just the other day. In the United States of America, I don't know where you live, I hope this doesn't offend you like, but the um, United States of America, they've just uh, ushered in a new, a new, uh, a new president. And, and the guy's a left wing, um, you know, uh, uh, well, I've got to be careful what I say, but, you know, the, the guy is, um, and he represents a party that is wicked to the uttermost. But on top of that, he's a papist. Yeah? And I'm watching this video, I see this in part of this video, I don't watch the whole thing. It's when he's being ordained into office, or whatever they call it there in America. And they're singing about Jesus and, and, and they're praying, you know, um, bringing God's name into this. Now, you might be a left-wing politician or subscriber to left-wing politics. Well, you're free to do that, you know, to be that. But to bring God's name into it. You know, that's kind of like America, like, you know, God's name seems to be brought into everything and anything. And some of them are in serious trouble. And we'll find them so in that day when God judges them. Be careful how you use God's name and what context you use God's name in. People, you know, that don't even know him, don't even know him. The person who is behind that name and use it in such a way? Well, that's exactly what the catechist means when he talks about the sins forbidden in the third commandment. We call it blasphemy. Taking the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt not, says God. So the sin of blasphemy, that, that includes his titles, the Lord of hosts, um, Lord, um, his attributes, any one of God's attributes, uh, his, uh, his wrath, yeah, his wrath, his holy displeasure, uh, his revelation of hell. People joke, talk lightly about, about such things, do they not? Um, God's attributes, um, even his love. His ordinances, uh, his works, all his work, his work of creation, his work of providence. Um, whether the providence be good or bad. You know, I, people, people were coming to me not so long ago on the street and asking me about the present virus. And of course, I'm there preaching God's word, and so they come to me and, and they... And, and they say in a very, very arrogant and, and a, in a, a wicked, evil way, you know, with wicked motives, you know, why doesn't your God take away this virus? And of course, my answer to them is, well, it, the God who brought it, and he'll take it away when he's ready, in his time, not yours. But you see, what they don't understand in their ignorance, in the darkness of their fallen minds, they're blaspheming God's name. The providences of God. God is sovereign in providence. And everything and anything that happens that falls out in this world does so because God has decreed it. The earthquake, the tsunami, the, the virus, the pestilence, the fire, um, and the, the good too. 
Well, what, you and I would tell him to be good. It's all of God. It's blasphemy. Okay? And God's nature, you know, and his character to attribute something to God that is false and wrong is taking the name of the Lord God in vain. Expressions such as Lord, how you use that word. I think I do believe as Christians we use it far too often unnecessarily unthoughtfully even all of us we're guilty of it uh, the goodness of, of God you know uh, we use uh, substitute language or some people do at least anyway you know good grief but what's behind that good and God's name yeah I think the predominant one today is um, OMG especially in writing oh my and God's name it's blasphemy it's taking the name of the Lord God in vain yeah away with it um, name calling uh, other people, but they say bringing God's name into it, wicked language directed against God. And people do it. I hear it all the time, especially, of course, when, I, when I'm, I'm preaching on the streets. You know, people who otherwise, otherwise, you know, wouldn't have a thought about God, wouldn't even be, wouldn't even be in their minds, you know. They're out shopping, they're walking down the street and... Uh, He's the furthest thing from their minds. But of course they see and, and hear a preacher and well, they go for it. They come at us and they say, I have heard men and women say the most horrendous things against God's nature and character. And that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. And their ignorance. You, you might say, you might say, well, they, they do it in ignorance, they don't know, if they knew, they wouldn't. Maybe they wouldn't, maybe they would, I don't know, but, but ignorance is not an excuse. It's not an excuse. So, uh, you know, accusing God of injustice, I mean, that, that's a, that's a favourite one too. You know, God, God is not just, you know, we, we speak about the doctrine of hell. Well, that's not fair. God is, un is unjust. He, sh he shouldn't just save some people. He shouldn't just save the ones that he's chosen. He, he, he should save everybody. God's unjust. He's not fair. Well, check out Romans chapter 9 if you want the, and, and answer some of the questions uh, that the apostle poses to you there. Who are you to argue against God? Who are you to tell God what to do? No, God is not unjust. God would, uh, God would be just in casting us all into hell. It's a wonder. It's a, it's a wonder of grace that He saves any at all. But justice, you want justice? If you're not a Christian today, the last thing I would suggest to you, the last thing that you want, is justice. Because if we got justice, we'd all be packed off to hell right now, this moment. No, it's not justice that you want. It's grace. It's God's undeserved favor towards those who take his name and use it to curse him and other people with and, and, and who accuse him of being unjust when they themselves are unjust to the uttermost. course this sin of blasphemy using the Lord God's name in vain was punishable by death was punishable by death that should uh, signify to you something of the severity with which God holds the sin and then again here here in Malachi telling his own people yeah that his curse will be upon them and even upon their blessings 
if they don't start respecting, revering his name as they ought to do. Of course, um, the penalty of death in the Old Testament for such translated into the New Testament would be excommunication from the church. Because that in itself is a spiritual death sentence to be thrown out of the church. Imagine being excommunicated from the church for blasphemy, for taking God's name in vain. Huh? Of course, uh, you very seldomly hear of such things today. Um, excommunication from churches, in Protestantism I mean, because, um, well, because of the weakness of the church, you know, because of the lack of preaching of God's law and the lack of the preaching of the uh, due consequences for sin, hell and its damnation a week, uh, benign preaching and uh, and of course um, church discipline. Um, it's, well, it's hardly to be found. Well, in these, this part of the world at least anyway, but uh, that would be for somebody who persistently calls him herself to be a Christian and is constantly blaspheming God's name in breach of this commandment. If there was not due repentance, then uh, um, church discipline would have to be uh, applied and if there's still no way forward, no repair, then excommunication would be the due penalty. Spiritual death. So challenging the goodness of God, the power of God, you know. If God, if God is so good, if God is so powerful, why doesn't he do this, that or the other? Why doesn't he take the cancer away? Why doesn't he take the COVID away? Lady here locally, and I was preaching just uh, not too long ago, a few weeks ago, she hurled, blasphemously hurled that question at me. Why doesn't he take the cancer away? I said to her, well, he would take your sin away. What about that? Of course, she was gone in a puff of smoke. People want God to do this, that and the other. Take this away, that away, but not take their sins away. Don't touch my sin. I love my sin. I hate the cancer. I hate the COVID, but I love my sin. Don't touch my sin. Leave my sin. Take away the effects of it. I hate the effects of it. The misery it brings upon me. Take that away, but don't take my sin away. Because they love their evil deeds. They love the darkness. That's why. So you see, um, sinful cursing, misapplying God's decrees, his providences, his names, his titles. Is it a man, is it a woman who has not broken this commandment? At some juncture, at some point in their life, maybe even you now. You see, the hub of the matter is that we've broken every one of us have broken every one of God's commandments. Every one of us. We're all guilty before God. And that's why you need a mediator. That's why you need a saviour. That's why you need Jesus. That's why you need the one that God, in his holy love, manifesting his holy love, I emphasise a holy love. Because that's exactly what it was. In sending his son into the world to die on that cross that men and women might see. 
in that cross two things not just the love of God yes that's there big time but that they might also see the holiness of God that they might see the revelation of the hatred of God for sin because that's what it costs that's what it takes to forgive a blasphemer that's what it takes to forgive any any commandment breaker any transgressor of God's law the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, to die on that cross an ignominious death and to bear the wrath of God on himself on that cross so that your sins could be forgiven, could be wiped out, washed away, forgotten by God. But make no mistake about it when you look at that cross, when you think about that cross, yes, think about the love. The love that condescended to become one of us. Take our nature on himself and die on that cross that death. That's love. That's love. But it's also the manifestation of the hatred of God for sin. God hates the sin. God hates it. And the only one you the only way that you can escape that hatred of God is in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God and become a recipient of that love that He manifested. In the way of repentance, there has to be a repentance, there has to be a turning from sin. Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Repent ye and believe the gospel, says Jesus. There has to be a turning from sin. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. There has to be a, a deliberate, fundamental turning from sin. And turning to God, through his son Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross and his resurrection, in order to receive the love, to become a recipient of that love, and a recipient of God's forgiveness and salvation. Freely, sovereignly and freely set forth, even before you today, that you, that you in that way of repentance and faith may turn to God through his Son, Jesus Christ, and be received into the family of God, adopted through the mediator, the only mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The one in whose name, that name which is above every other name, the Bible says, that name, the one that God loves, Jesus, his only begotten Son, in his name alone, in none other name is there salvation. Under the whole canopy of heaven, whereby a person can be saved. Only in that precious, precious name that men and women day after day blaspheme and curse. And yet in that name, there is to be found salvation, redemption, the forgiveness of sins through his blood. But only, only in that name, no other name. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One name only, Jesus. You go to him in repentance and faith. He'll receive you and not cast you out. May God bless you and go with you. If you're around, hopefully, see you tomorrow.